This episode of Film Rides brought to you by Domain.com. Welcome to Film Ride Mondays. Today we have some questions to answer, so let's answer them. you purchase a piece of royalty-free music from Premium Beat or any other website and use it in your video on YouTube, are you allowed to monetize your video for the ads? The thing to do with something like this is always look at the license that you're purchasing. There's different types of licenses that you can purchase and they'll always have documentation to explain that. So definitely read that and make sure you read it thoroughly. Uh, it always has stipulations into, you know, what level of budget you can use it on, uh, where you can use it, web, television, theatrical, what sort of run you can do with it. So make sure you read that. Uh, it, usually the price will go up depending on what you're doing, what your budget is uh, for the license that you want. Is it possible to become a successful 13 year old girl director? Absolutely, anything is possible and you should just be thinking about wanting to pursue your passion, always wanting to learn and to get better. Don't worry about the success. With passion and time and creativity and talent, that will come. Just worry about telling your stories the best way you possibly can and really understanding how to tell your stories or do that thing that you're trying to do, be it cinematography, directing, editing, writing, whatever it is, really dive in and start trying to understand the craft that you want to use to uh, reach an audience or express yourself. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, put in those hours, be passionate, be obsessive about that thing, and in time, success will come. Don't worry about what age it comes at, just keep pursuing it. Which Hollywood director would you like to meet the most and why? From Ryan Mondays, don't laugh this time. Steven Spielberg, of course, he is my favorite director. No one, in my opinion, moves the camera like this man. The way, if you shut off the audio of any movie and watch it, you can really dissect and see what the filmmaker is doing and it's always impressive, but with Spielberg, the way he moves the camera, when and why, always blows my mind. In every movie he makes, it, when you really shut off the sound and dissect, you realize how many times he's doing essentially a one and just holding one shot for so long, but he moves the camera in such a way and blocks the actors in such a way that in your mind you feel like there was editing there and there was none. Uh, the, some of my favorite examples are in Munich and Raiders of the Lost Ark. His, his oh man. He's so good. Are you ever going to expand Film Riot? Yes, we've been planning for these things for years. I mean, since the beginning, there's been ideas of where we want to take Film Riot and that is refined over time. And it are, there are things that we are working towards that will happen uh, pretty soon. I'll, I'll say within the next five years, Film Riot will be a hundred times more expanded than it is now. Next year, we'll bring on some more stuff. I mean, lately, almost every year, there's something new that we're doing. I mean, Quick Tips is an expansion on Film Riot. Film Riot Mondays is an expansion on Film Riot, and we're just gonna keep going further and further. As we've talked about before, we have a lot of ideas to really dive in with you guys and make it much more immersive, much more interactive, and bring you guys in on a lot of things that we're doing. We're really excited about these ideas. We just wanna more and more make great information and experience uh, free and available uh, for our Film Riot family. Aren't you worried that your fight sound effects pack could end up on torrents? It is an awesome pack and there is a lot of bad people out there. Torrenting is just kind of a sad fact of life now. Um, all of our stuff, including our films, have been torrented and there's not much that you can really do about it other than sigh and, you know. But I mean, tell and losses, it's kind of funny that people are torrenting it because it's free on YouTube. So that doesn't really make sense a bunch. I mean, if they added like the special features, that'd be one thing, but none of them have the special features. So I have no idea why they're torrenting the film. It doesn't make any they're sense. They're torrenting just to torrent. <laughs> they're just, they're just to spite me. But all of our stuff has been torrented, uh, which is, it's a bummer, but there's nothing you can do about it. And if we're being honest, who hasn't torrented at one time or another? I have in the past and I'm not proud of it. After I really reflected on it, you really think about it because it's so easy to just click that button and get something for free and with no repercussion but you really are breaking into someone's house and stealing their things essentially, especially when you're talking about the indie level. That's why if I watch an indie film and I really love it, uh, if I've rented it, I'll buy it too, just to try to support the indie community. Um, any kind of software or plugin or asset, I am always buying those things to support that indie community because people like us, these small companies uh, who are trying to help this community of low budget filmmakers, uh, stuff like that is really detrimental and really hurts the company and hurts the possibility of continuing on to do these things. So hopefully people will support 
indie film and not continue to hurt it. Why isn't your wife in videos? Well, I mean, the main reason is because my wife has no desire to be an actress. She doesn't really like being in front of the camera. She doesn't want to be involved with filmmaking. She just wants to support what I do, which is totally cool by me because I mean, if you look at any female personality on the internet, they get a lot of harassment of dudes that think it's okay to say certain things to them and it's entirely not okay. Uh, I mean, our Film Riot family is amazing and I'd be pretty shocked if any of you guys did that stuff. I mean, honestly, when we go through the comments on YouTube and the comments that you guys sent us on Twitter and Facebook, uh, you're all so encouraging and uplifting and really energizing to us to like keep doing what we're doing and we've thanked you guys plenty in the past for that, but I don't think we still, I don't think we do it enough. You're all amazing, but it's a sad fact that there are some just terribly disrespectful people on the internet uh, and guys who think they have the rights to say whatever they want to women and, it, and it's really really sad. I mean if you know anything about the whole video game debacle that's going on right now you know exactly what I'm talking about and if ever that harassment or nonsense is ever brought up guys just lash back, not guys but bad people just lash back in an even worse way it's really, really discouraging and sad to see. So if I, if my wife doesn't wanna do it, I'd rather keep her off the internet to sidestep any uh, not wonderful human being saying not wonderful things about her and just angering me greatly because I am extremely protective. Last question, tips on correctly executing a voiceover both technically and narratively. Voiceover can be very tricky and it does depend on the style in which you're doing the voiceover for. If you're doing something like noir, it might be a more monotone thing. Um, so it definitely depends on the style that you're going for with what your actor does, but you definitely want to get someone who is going to be good at voiceover work. Just talking to a mic sounds really simplistic, but some people you'll get in there and they sound like they'll be great until you turn the mic on and say go, and then all of a sudden they go super dead and there's no life to it. Inflection is really important where you're adding that inflection in and that emphasis in the voice is really important and knowing where you want to hit those moments. So it's a matter of knowing thematically what you want the voiceover to do. One thing that I would suggest is getting a professional voiceover artist. They are worth their weight in gold. If you have the budget for it, uh, I would suggest something like Stars Agency, which we use for the Adobe and the Frog bit. Uh, they were fantastic. They'll find uh, the voices for you that uh, will fit your project, send you a voice auditions for you to go through. You pick the one you want and then you direct over the phone as uh, the artist records in a professional studio with their team and then they just send you the files. It's really great. So I would definitely check that out. If you don't have the budget for that, just make sure you sort of audition the people, uh, your friends, whoever it is, um, to find out who's gonna be the best at that thing. Technically, you just wanna get a really solid mic, get them close to the mic, use a pop filter so you're not getting those plosives all the time, and then record it in uh, the most sound dampened room you can. Just a really quiet room, put some blankets around them if you have to, shove them in a closet with a lot of clothes, that, that would even work, but just get uh, the most quiet atmosphere as you possibly can so you can tweak the sound however you want in post. Domain.com is a place to go if you're trying to get yourself seen on the interwebs, if you got a business, if you have work of, of filmmaking proportions and you want the world to see it, a website is what you want. They got the hosting plans that are reliable and affordable. The domain discovery service that'll help you pick the name for you that you want, because one that you want might be taken, and it'll be like, hey, how about these? It's like having a buddy sitting behind you, helping you come up with name ideas, it's good stuff. And if you want to save some monies, use the coupon code FILMRIOT at checkout to get 15% off your domain name and web hosting, because when you think domain names, Domain.com. Perfect. Logo. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. This one's called The Great Abyss, which is from The Music Bed. They've been doing these vignettes on artists for a little while now. And this is one of my favorites thematically and visually. It is just fantastic. Uh, Justin Robinson actually tweeted it not too long ago. Check it out right here. Until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.